from next week's mini concepts, but red herrings should have been their name. The top brass at Rover knew all the time that this design was to be chosen. The idea was to retain the best design cues while updating the vehicle for the next century. After the break, the full story behind the new Mini. Welcome back to Four Wheels Good and our continuing coverage of the Frankfurt Motor Show. Some hardened hacks don't bother going to press conferences at motor shows because they think there'll be no real surprises revealed. The night before the show opened, however, the new Mini burst onto the stage and there was a rush to the phones to get a picture in the next day's national papers and magazines. Now that is a taste. This is Mr. Stevenson, ladies and gentlemen. And is this a taste of the new Mini? This isn't a taste of the new Mini, Sonia. This it is. is the new Mini. Wow. This is the real thing. So what, what else can you tell us about it? A little bit more details. We need some more details here. Well, first of all, the key thing is this is truly a worthy successor to that great tradition that Sir Alec Izigonis started some 40 years ago when he designed the original Mini. Now, I think many people in the motor industry felt that Sir Alec had created an icon. We thought he had, mm -hmm. and this car is faithful to that icon. Well, that's OK, but doesn't that mean it's sort of old-fashioned, then? No, it doesn't. No. Come on, let's come and have a look at our little okay. baby, Sonia. Let's see what we think of it. Let us see, yes. I mean, if we come round the side here, as you can see, the car is absolutely, unashamedly sporty, and we're really proud of that. <laughs> A car like a Mini, what an act to follow. Um, and the car has been with us for um, nearly 40 years. I mean, that is incredible, isn't it? But Sir Alec Izigonis, all those years ago, created a car that could last so long. And now the task is to replace it. Well, you can imagine, this is, this is a, a pretty terrifying mission. With one that will take us to 2040, then, if you're going up those days. Well, I'd, I'd like to think, <laughs> I'd like to think we could um, follow Sir Alex. Act. I, sadly, I think in the modern era, cars don't have such a long life. But, but, but certainly, I think the new Mini will have a, an, an extensive and healthy life. I know you're talking about a car that's going to take you forward and a car that's got to have um, modern styling cues and have its place certainly in the next century, which is when we'll see it. But you must have wanted to retain a lot of the heritage of the Mini there, which is quite obvious in the styling. What have you kept, do you think, that is really the quintessential British Mini? Well, we felt it was absolutely critical that the car had to be recognisable as a Mini, instantly recognisable down the road. And I'm very confident we've achieved that. If you look at the original Mini, you'll see a whole number of features about it. First of all, and probably most importantly, it's the face of the car. That's always the most important thing to look at. Mini has that friendly face and you'll see it on the old car and you'll see just that same face waiting to call you into the showroom on the new car clearly there's what we call in the, in the design trade the down the road graphics a wonderful industry term what it fundamentally means is when the car is viewed down the road which is how the, the way you normally look at a car how does it look does it look good and is it recognizable and the new mini has that instant down the road graphic appeal. It's totally unique, it's immediately recognizable, and you know it's a Mini, and that's the way we assess it. In addition to that, there's the execution of the individual features of the car. The old Mini was clearly a very British piece of design, and the new car is also. And British designs tend to have some exquisite detailing of the individual components of the car. And if you study the new Mini, I think you'll see that. You talk about it being very much a piece of British design, and of course you now are owned by the BMW Group. Was there some kind of a, a battle going on at all for you to, to keep the Mini a British design car and a British manufactured car, or, or, or did BMW want some input into that? Uh, it would be entirely wrong to say there was a battle. Firstly, I think it's fair to say that we must credit the BMW Group for allowing Rover Group to be able to fund the new Mini. 
Uh, it was always a touch and go project for us. Uh, and within the context of BMW, it became very clear to us that we could afford to do the new car. What a wonderful position. We work extremely closely as an integrated part of BMW design and engineering, and I'm proud that that is the case. But equally, we retain our Rover independence. So within that context, naturally, there are some wonderful battles between engineers and designers, and that's simply a healthy part of a group working to produce fantastic products. Having said that, is the new Mini a British motor car? You bet your life it is. It's being designed and engineered in Rover's new test facilities, new design and engineering test facilities at Gaydon, and that for me makes it an entirely British proposition. It will be manufactured in Rover's factory at Longbridge, and a very high proportion of the components will be sourced in the UK. What could be better for Britain? So it will mean more jobs for Britain, will it, when it comes into production? It absolutely will, I'm pleased to say. It will secure the jobs for our workforce at Longbridge. Of course, it's tremendously good news for my design and engineering team. Yet another project <laughs> to keep them busy. And it's super news for the component industry in the UK. I'm joined now by another British classic, as classic as the Mini itself, John Cooper. It's lovely to see you. John, what do you think of the new Mini? I think it's great. It's a Mini. It's a new, and it's going to be the new Mini. It's, it's got a wheel in each corner. It looks like a Mini. And I know it's a little bigger, and it's had to be modified slightly for the safety regulations and those sort of things. But I think the team at Rovers have done a wonderful job on it, actually. I'm very proud. And I'm sure Issy Gonis in the year in the 21st century would have been very proud of it if he, when he see, you know, if he'd have seen it. Do you think this is how he would have liked to have seen the Mini develop? Oh, I'm sure he would. I mean, you, you remember he designed it 40 years ago, really. It, it's a, such a cult car, you know, especially in Japan and places like that. And the thing about a Mini, it's, when you get in it, it's part of you. It's fun to drive. And I'm sure the new one's going to be the same. The most obvious things seem to be obviously the light. The lights are different on it. It's, it's larger, it's higher off the floor. Do you think that's going to change the whole mini driving experience? Because it's a very immediate feel, isn't it? Not, well, it won't if it, when you get in it and it feels like a mini. No, it won't matter. That'll be all right. And, I, you know, everybody, we've had these concept cars with the engine under the back seat and that sort of thing. But this is a proper mini with the engine when the same place as Isigonis put it 40 years ago in the front with the front wheel drive. No, I think it's great and uh, I'm very proud. So what do you think you could do with it? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> and when are you going to get your hands on one to try? Well, I hope, you know, perhaps before I'm in my wheelchair anyhow. <laughs> Where did you draw all your inspirations from? Because you've done some amazing things with minis over the year. You know, where, where have you got all your ideas and all the inspiration from? Well, basically, when I knew Isigonis before the mini, and uh, when he was designing the Morris Minor and that sort of thing. And we were using the Morris Minor engine in our Formula Junior racing cars yeah. when we were building Grand Prix cars. And I saw him building the Mini and I realized what a classic car it was. And I took one over to Italy and Lampredi, the chief engineer of Fiat's, and previously Ferraris drove it. And he said that is the car of the future, which really hit me. And when the Mini came out, my drivers, McLaren, Brabham, myself, Salvadori, we put Formula Junior engines into the car. They didn't stop because of the drum brakes. And we realized it was the first four-seater family car, only 10 feet long, front-wheel drive, east-west engine, which everybody has copied now, 
which handled like a sports car. It was a sports car. And it was and that immediate, was it? That you was just immediate knew. feeling. I thought, this is a car we can do something with. And it won the Monte Carlo Rally. <laughs> well, it won it four times, but disqualified the third time because <laughs> of the headlights, you know. But it won many rallies and many touring car championships. And it's a, and it's a family car. And it was, a, it, thanks to Isigonis, it was the start of the hatchback, the, mm -hmm. the Golf and the Peugeot and so forth, you know.